Cancer is a catch-all term for disease in which the body cells divide without stopping. And while some cancers are more common than others, there's actually hundreds of different types of cancer with a broad spectrum of different treatments and outcomes. So how does your doctor diagnose cancer, differentiate between the different types, and recommend the best treatment for each? The answer lies behind the scenes. Not with your family doctor or oncologist, but with someone you've probably never met or perhaps even heard of, your pathologist. The process of diagnosis begins with a biopsy, a tissue sample that is removed from the body to assess the presence, type, and or extent of a disease. Once removed from the body, the first step is preservation of the tissue, also known as fixation. The specimen is immediately placed into a small container of a chemical known as formalin, which helps to preserve the cells in the tissue. When the biopsy arrives in the surgical pathology laboratory, it, along with many others, is examined, measured, and described during a process known as gross evaluation. Larger tissues are marked with red, yellow, or blue dyes, and then dissected. After evaluation, the specimen is placed into a unique, numbered, and barcoded plastic box known as a cassette. The cassettes are then loaded into a tissue processor in batches. The processor dehydrates the specimen with alcohol, which effectively replaces the water in all of the cells. The alcohol is then removed by a chemical such as xylene and replaced by paraffin wax. This process transforms a piece of human tissue into a specimen that can be preserved for decades. After the cassettes are removed from the processor, a histotechnologist, someone who specializes in specimen processing and production of diagnostic slides, then embeds or carefully places the tissue into a rectangular mold that is filled with more wax in order to create what is known as a tissue block. When the wax has completely cooled, the hardened paraffin blocks will be cut. The cooled blocks are made even colder by laying them out on a solid tray of ice. This ensures that the wax is hard enough to slice extremely thin. The chilled paraffin blocks are then placed into a microtome, or a blade mounted onto a rotating handle. Each slice made by the microtome is only 4 microns thick, far thinner than a human hair. These are carefully picked off of the microtome and laid into a water bath. This enables the histotechnologist to pick up the incredibly thin slice and lay it perfectly flat onto a glass slide. The glass slides are collected onto special trays and entered into machines that stain large batches of slides uniformly and efficiently. At the end of this process, the machine also places a glass cover slip on the slide, which will protect both the specimen and the microscope. When the trays of slides are removed from the machine, a final quality check is completed. The slides are then ready to be examined by a pathologist. Slides are organized by patient and organ system subspecialty and assigned to a pathologist to be examined. Typically, a single pathologist will diagnose a biopsy and generate a report, a process known as signing out. In particularly difficult cases, the pathologist may share the slides with expert colleagues in order to arrive at a consensus diagnosis. The results are reported in a succinct pathology report that is uploaded directly to the electronic medical record. The patient's primary care doctor, surgeon, or specialist can then access the results and deliver them to the patients in order to discuss the next steps to be taken. Some features of cancer include sheets of very large cells that are rapidly dividing, indicated by many cells with condensed DNA called mitoses. Cancer can also often show necrosis, or tissue death, because the cells are so rapidly dividing that they outgrow their blood supply. Inflammatory processes show numerous white blood cells of different types within the tissue, which can either indicate the body's immune system fighting infection, or in some cases, attacking itself, known as autoimmune disease. It takes years of training for pathologists to be able to look at cells and determine what is normal versus abnormal, detect infections and inflammatory conditions, and determine what is cancer versus what is benign. This is just a glimpse into the field of pathology and how a large team works behind the scenes to diagnose cancers and other diseases. Even though you've never met them, there are pathologists and laboratory professionals who care about you and work hard to ensure you're given the correct diagnosis.